self-image because um, when I was young, I didn't know what I couldn't or what I could do. And I was really, really inspired. Uh, we're all inspired by something when we're little. I was I really latched on to Charlie's Angels. So I had this image of Charlie's Angels. I was Lucy Lou before Lucy Lou hit the silver screen. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I, I had this, um, uh, I don't know if anyone's been around this long, the Avengers as in the black and white TV series, Steed. And there was Emma Peel. And she was just, you know, a kick-ass heroine. And that's how I wanted to be. I wanted to perceive myself in that way. And that's why I did all these sort of adventurous things and I learned martial arts. And I became a private investigator for well over a decade. And I worked in Mayfair. And I, I solved people's problems. Not at all, not at all. So it, it, she was the original female heroine. I mean, I loved Wonder Woman and all of that. So I became what I thought about. And this is this is key here because I didn't know what I was doing, what, what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Um, and so when I became a private investigator, what, what, normal, what happened was people would waltz in and they would come in with big story, with some drama that was in their life and they would be confused and frustrated and want a solution and what I would do is sit there and go that right there is what you need and I'll go and get it for you and that pretty much is what I do with my coaching today I have this ability to sort of discern um, from all the the fluff and then get straight to the point so, um, yeah, so basically I was just living into my desires um, and what I really want to talk about today, as everyone knows, is self-image is the number one key to success. So we better be clear what exactly success is first, right? And um, that's very personal. It's very individual. So let's get on with that, shall we? Um, uh, a little bit more as well in terms of background. I, I, I am a coach and I'm mentored by someone called, um, a great man called Bob Proctor. I don't know if anyone's heard of him. He was in this movie, The Secret, uh, back in the late 2000s. Uh, he was one of the teachers on the show. And he's one of the best teachers in the world with regards to peak performance and development of human potential. Um, and how fundamental our self-image is to our well-being and performance is, is really the game changer here. So I should have called this the, the game changer because I, I, I really believe that self-image is the secret source in success. And if you can get what I'm teaching and sharing today down pat as in as short a period of time I've got with you, you can literally name your worth, you can name your income, you can call in the relationships you desire, you can go for the job of your dreams, the role or business that you truly want, and you're not compromising. How good does that sound? And yeah, thumbs up. I mean, what's stopping you in the first place? So let's address what exactly is self-image? And I keep, I keep saying self-image, self-image. What is it? And I'll show, share what my understanding is of this with you. And what is what is success? I think that's the first port of call. So success, it's a, it's a broad term. Um, and one definition I live by is that it is really a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If you've got a pen and paper, I'd write that down. It's a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And that was a quote by Earl Nightingale. Earl was Bob Proctor's mentor. And Earl was mentored by the author of this book, Think and Grow Rich. And this is an awesome, awesome book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, written in the 1920s. Um, he, this book was written as a result of um, Andrew Carnegie, who was the wealthiest man in the world at the time. And he did not want to go to his graves with his secrets of success, his principles of success. And he encouraged the young Napoleon Hill to go out and interview the most successful, greatest minds of their time, which included Thomas Edison, 
um, Henry Ford of Ford Cars. So we're talking about the original, this is like the original success principles book and what everything from personal growth industry has sort of spiraled around from. So Napoleon Hill mentored Earl, Earl mentored Bob, Bob, Bob mentors me. So the progressive realization, okay, progressive realization, what does that mean? It means you're moving towards something, right? This is really important. We're moving towards our North Star. You know, and as long as we're on our path, it doesn't matter if we falter. It doesn't matter if we fail what appears like failure. We just keep moving towards it. And that's what makes you a success, first of all. What is a worthy ideal? So progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Worthy ideal. Okay, let's think about this. Something worthy of us. What's worthy of you? What's worthy of you to invest your time with? Because we are trading our time for something every day, right? We're in our jobs. So we're worthy to trade our life for something. Sometimes we live really, really into our day-to-day. -day. We cross off things on our so-called to-do list. But really, we have one life one chance to make a contribution and leave a legacy if that's what you want to do and our lifetime is made of a series of days and mel robbins if anyone's heard of her she did a tedx talk a brilliant tedx talk in um, 2011 and she reminds us how spectacular we really are because we're all here right on planet earth how do we get here we, we were one in 400 trillion one in 400 trillion to be here. What are we here for? Um, and I trust that everyone who comes to the coffee meets are here because we're here to learn something because we have a growth mindset. Because there's something in us that desire more, right? And not only are we one in 400 trillion, we're living in the UK <laughs> for our sins, um, but it's, it is a country of peace and freedom. It is a country, and so we are, we are blessed, okay? So that's, that's the th first thing. Yet, it's become a norm for most of us to live in a certain amount of chronic stress for most people. You know, we're, we're pushing, we are high achievers, we have families, we have careers, we wanna get places, we wanna get things done. And, you know, we do get caught up in our to-do lists. We do. And we're living like this day to day. And it's kind of like being in the foothills of, of the mountains. I'm a, I'm a climber as well, by the way. So I like to use this analogy quite a lot. We're in the foothills of the mountains and we're stuck in the weeds. And we don't really see the beauty of the valley from high above. We just get stuck here dealing with our day to day. Does anyone identify with that at all? Is there a show of hands? Is that identifiable? Okay. I don't know if I've got everyone on the screen, it's quite a few people. Um, okay, so what exactly are we working for? What are we, what are we doing? What are we striving for? I'm curious. Um, is it more money? Yeah, Mark. Have yeah, I, I, th I think it, it, it's an interesting scenario because sort of the, you know, the, the top of a mountain um, is, is very clear. Um, you know, there is a top. Um, but when when you're when you're sometimes when you're in the foothills, you can't see that top. Um, and using your scenario, sometimes when you're in the the, the foothills and you're, you're talking about this, it actually, have you got a clear definition of where the top is and where you want to go, um, what you want to achieve, and do you have multiple perfect. mountains to climb? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. That's that's brilliant, and that's exactly where I'm leading on to. Right, so. I mean, I'm, I'm curious if anyone can write in the chat box. Um, I'm actually on my iPad, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna see the chat box, but um, you know, what, what is it that drives, drives you? Or just speak up. What, what, is, what is your driver? Anyone? We have a quiet bunch today, aren't we? I can't see anything in the chat box. Okay, so. Sorry, go on, Susan. Sorry. 
Yeah, maybe okay. that's part of the issue. I'm sitting here thinking, what is my driver? And if I don't know what my driver is, then maybe yeah. that's that that's the problem of how to to find the the end. If you see what I mean, or the goal. Exactly. Yeah. And and that that was something I was going to address actually. Right. I mean, we could say we want more money, but I could say here's five pounds. That's more money. So what are we defining? Why do we want this amount of money? Do we want that promotion? Do you want that second home? Is it the education? Great, Kenzie, improving myself. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Go get some piano lessons and that's improvement. Um, we have to be very specific. And ultimately, making a difference. Yes, and a lot of people want to have that impact. Um, but what does that look like? Can we be more specific about this? So this is all great. This is all great and that's the starting point, but we've got to ask ourselves that question first of all, and I'll bring this right around what's got to do with self-image, improving myself and making a positive difference. Beautiful, Louise. So when it all comes down to the end of the day, the majority of people want to be free of financial concern. We're not really, like a lot of people don't really want the super uber wealth but they want to have that free or financial concern so that we can spend our days uh, with people that we love in places uh, we want to visit and explore and just live life so that's a general aim but we want to be really specific and I want to talk about goals but I don't want to say goals I want to talk about desires goals is kind of like a masculine energy desires sort of a feminine receivership mode Goals is kind of like, let's achieve, let's go for that. Yes, it is a North Star. I prefer the word desires, but I will use the word interchange inter interchangeably. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys a question. If you won the lottery, you didn't have to work again, and it was a significant amount. How would you spend your days? This is a serious question, right? Because remember, we're saying, you know, we've got one life, one chance to make a contribution. And if we don't think, start thinking about it today, giving back to others. Love it, Sunita. Um, writing. What do you want to write, Dennis? You're going to uh, publish a book, um, fiction, life story. I want, to, I want to know about that, Dennis. Right. So what do you want? Okay, this is a, that's a serious question. The first thing, what do we want? What are your desires? And what is a desire? Your desire is the unexpressed possibility. It's unexpressed because it's inside, but it's seeking expression without. And when you have a desire for something, when you have a desire for something, it's yours to create. It's for you. Um, when you get this idea, oh, I'd, I'd love to have this. Um, I'd love to visit Venice and eat all this wonderful Italian food and spaghetti because it's really good there. Um, I have a desire, I love climbing mountains. Not everybody does, but that's my desire. It's mine, mine to express, it gives me joy. Um, and everyone's desires are unique. And there's no judgments here. Want a new home? Want a brand new car? It's, uh, it's all good, you know? And, and our desires guide us in life. And we're gonna have a list of number of desires, but there's always gonna be one overriding desire to go for. And I'm gonna ask you to think big and whether we can come up with the answers in this session or whether you wanna go home, um, well, we are probably at home, but when we're you know, off work, really go introspect and ask yourself this question. I want you to think big, not realistic. Um, I don't want you to start thinking, well, I, I think, I suppose I could do this. I want you to dig deep what you really, really want and something that pulls on you and excites you. And as you said, Dorothy, you know, um, sometimes people struggle with this question. I never really gave myself permission to think about it. Why did that happen? Um, it's because somewhere in our little years, something would have happened and that left an impression on you that you had an experience that didn't feel so nice. Um, you didn't get that doll that you wanted. Um, for me, it was a little gun. <laughs> um, I, you know, something you wanted and you couldn't have it. And it kind of went, oh, I better not ask for it because I don't want to be wounded in that way. I don't want that hurt. 
um, is that feeling of if I ask for it and I put it out there and people see that I asked for it, what if I don't, what if I don't make it? There will be these feelings of disappointment, this fear of failure. And we don't like that feeling. You know, we don't dream big. And so we let the fear stay active in us. And I think as, as adults, we do kind of like create this protection and we feel numb. And your memory will pull at you, you know, it will say, hey, remember this last time? It uh, didn't pan out too well for us. So let's not do that again. Let's be realistic. Let's do what we think we can do. So what I want to do is just draw on your awareness to these thoughts that may come up for you. When we have a desire, it's like I said, it's in us. And I want to think, think about a balloon. You blow it up. It blows up. There's your desire. It's building. You blow it up. It gets bigger. Nice big balloon. And then you have a bit of resistance. Who do you think you are? Pop. You don't, you don't go for it. You don't go for it. So I want you to play around with the idea of what is it that you want and not worry about this resistance part, the pin pricking. And I would love for you to write out what is it that you want to create. Um, and, it, you know, it could be anything from, you know, I want a beautiful garden with jasmine plants and rose bushes, but write it all out. It's like, yes, I would love to have all of these things. Write out, is it the house? Is it the car? Is it, what is it about the, your job that you love? Where, where do you see yourself going with all of this? What do you want to create? What is your desire? So this is what I mean by getting the, the success because success is progressive realization to worthy ideal. So what is that worthy ideal to you? So that's number one. And then we'll, I can talk about self-image because you don't change your self-image if you don't have anything to change for. Because where we are right now, if, if you're not pursuing anything, you're on repeat, you're managing your day, you're in the foothills. And what's happening is you might call it comfort zone. Comfort zone. Um, I'd love to do this, but I'm busy here today. I've got to deal with these projects. Oh, I've got this great idea. I want to write this book. But hang on, I just look after my kids today, get them sorted, get them off to school, you know? So this is, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. We, we, we go off on a tangent, then we kill, kill the idea. Um, the first thing is to really fall in love passionately with what is it that you want and sort of move through this numbness, this shield, this emotional shield we've created and just give yourself permission. Okay, and it's just you and a notepad, just journaling. Nothing's crazy is going to happen. Um, so that's the first step. And when you write out your desires, I want you to write them out in the present tense. It's absolutely 100% critical that you do that. So I have this car. I live in this home. Um, and when you write that about this dream house, I live in this home. I live in this. You could say I would love a dream house. But what does that mean? You know, I, when I, in my dream house, I want to feel like it's an experience when I walk into the home with fresh flowers everywhere and the scent of lilies and lavender and bringing my senses into it because that's how we build the desire. If it's just a shopping list, it's a mechanical process. And you go, right, there's my list of things I'd really love to have. I'd love to fly first class. Why do you want to fly first class? So write these down. I take my family on five-star first class trips. Um, because I can see the joy on my children's faces when I show them tickets to Disneyland and surprise them. You know, well, I want to light, light you up, light you up. Um, we've got to know the star we're shooting at and figure out what are our truest desires. And you may notice some resistance about it. Just recognize that it's there, but just, just play, just play. Now the main part, self-image. This is the meat, all right? I love, I love this topic so much. It's my, it's my favorite um, to share about this because I really think that you understand self-image and how to adjust that. And I don't mean changing yourself in any way. I'm just talking about 
how to change how you, you perceive yourself. There's a big difference. Um, there's two self images, the one we see in the mirror and uh, the self image is what we say to ourselves inside, inside here. And what we see in the mirror, definitely, and the way I do it is actually to go into a state of relaxation. Um, just play some soft music and just ask yourself the question, what do I want? Only you will know. You know what you love. You know, you know what foods you love. You know what places you love. You know the kind of people you, you want to hang out with. And just journal and let it out. It's, it's the only way. Um, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll ask you all, make a list of 50 things. I know don't make, I say don't make a shopping list, but at least start with a list. Start, start, what, what would you, what would you love to have? And, and I would ask yourself that question with, if the sky is the limit, if you could have, if you had genie in your lamp and you had more than three wishes, you had 50 wishes, 50 plus. And you could ask for any salary or revenue re remuneration you wanted. Sky's the limit. And this is quite interesting because people still put a cap on it. <laughs> even, even when I say the sky is the limit. That's the question. I can send you guys a, a list of questions to ask yourself to prompt, to prompt you. And you'll go on a thought tangent because that's the first thing. And I want to say, just give yourself permission to. So that's, that's how we deal with that aspect. Does that answer your question, Sabrina? Yes, thank you. Amazing. Okay, so self-image. So there was two images, the, one in the mirror, the one inside. Um, self-image is what we think of ourselves. It is a concept. It is a concept of ourself. It's an opinion. What we think we're good at, as you just said, Sabrina, and what we think we're bad at. What are our strengths and weaknesses? And I would kind of think of it as branding. You know, how do we show up? How do we present ourselves and express ourselves? Um, and in relation to our desires that we've just sort of mapped out very roughly, um, what you think of yourself right now is most likely limiting you in some way in achieving those desires once you've picked the thing that you want most of all. Otherwise, you'd already have it. Otherwise, you'd already have it. So self-image is literally the way we think, the way that we feel about ourselves, the way we think and feel impacts our behaviors, what we do. And what impacts our behaviors impacts our results. So if you wanna change the results you have, you have to change the way that you think and feel. So if I can expand on this, um, we won't go any further than our self-image. We will not do any more than what we believe we can do. And what we believe we can do is arbitrary. Uh, when does positive self-image tip into, uh, sorry, I didn't see the question, Sebastian. Katie, can you read that out for me? Yep, sorry, I've just lost it on my phone as well. Bear with me two seconds. So Sean said, when does um, positive self-image tip over into arrogance? Ah, oh, right. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Um, and I'll explain that in a second as I go through, because it, it, it basically comes down to how, okay, and I know a lot of people here in corporate, so... Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about the idea that we are spiritual beings living a human existence. I don't know how many people subscribe to that right here, um, that we have infinite potential and there's no such thing as arrogance. We are perfect inside. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, confidence is just, it's just a perception. It's, a, it's how you think of yourself. It's how you think of yourself. So, um, and, I'll, and I, will, I will come back to that in a second. So what I'm trying to say is we don't go further than what we believe we can do. Okay, so our belief is our version of truth and we will always act according to our truth. So would we go, if we wanted, if we're in sales and you did not think you were a good salesperson, do you think you'd be 
reaching out to many people in the week. Um, maybe your presentation may be a bit on the soft side or you're a little bit uncertain. So you're, if you don't believe in your heart, your conscious mind says, I'm a good salesperson, but in your subconscious, you don't quite, don't quite feel it. You don't feel quite own it. It will affect what you will do. As opposed to someone who does feel like, no, actually, I'm, I'm, really, good at, I'm really good at this. The results would be so, so different. So our self-image is a, is a program. It's a set point in our subconscious, very similar to a thermostat. Right, thermostat controls the temperature in the room. Um, the thermostat always auto-corrects. So if the temperature goes down, the furnace will fire up in the boiler to bring the temperature back up. So we have a belief about our settings. We have a belief about how much we think we can earn. We have a belief how much we think we can charge for our services. So if you're a six-figure income earner and you drop to 80 in one year, you'll find a way back to 100 because it's programmed in you because you think you're worth that. Um, there's another book I want to recommend. This is all about self-image, Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. Um, he explains that our setting is like an autopilot. So if you're flying from London to LA, autopilot always corrects its way to LA. Um, they say a rocket that goes to the moon fails its way to the moon. It's always correcting. And that's what our belief of ourselves, that's what determines our results. It's a setting, it's a program. Um, back to Maxwell Maltz, he was a plastic surgeon. He discovered he would conduct procedures on people that would beautify them. You know, he'd remove a scar, a bump on their nose, and emotionally um, that would make them feel more confident about themselves. But he also noticed that it didn't always happen. And that's how we surmise that there is an image on the outside and an image that we hold on the inside. Uh, Bivana, you have a question. Please, you're up. <laughs> Thanks. Um, with definition, self-image is what we think of ourselves. But I find that a lot of times my self-image is influenced by what other people around me think of me. Um, so I've been in situations where I think people think, you know, well of me and then I feel better about myself, but in situations where I think, oh, like not really, then I don't feel all that great about myself. So it is influenced by that. So do you have any advice or comments about how we could handle that? You choose whether you, we, our conscious mind has said, has the ability to accept or reject an idea, right? If I told you I believed in uh, double vaccinations and other, somebody else doesn't, right? That I can choose to accept that. So if someone has a belief that about you, you can choose to accept that or not. That is, that is literally a choice. Um, and I think I've got a postman at the door. <laughs> I hope he goes away. Um, so I'm going to talk about judgments because what other people think isn't, isn't really any of our business. Um, I'll share a story. Um, this comes back to how we were all born perfect. When I was an infant, um, I was loved very dearly. I thought I was amazing. I thought I was Wonder Woman. I thought I was invincible. And then I went to school. And when I went to school, I met other kids that were not very kind. And I did get bullied. And I was told by them that I was less than because I was different. And I was left feeling, oh, I guess maybe that's true. And my self-esteem and self-confidence got knocked and I didn't really want to contribute to classes. I was withdrawn. And then I just decided I was just a shy child and that's how I grew up. But that's because I perceived a situation in that way. Was that true? No, I, the truth is, is that what I always thought, we were born perfect, that we are amazing, that we can do anything. Why did we learn the word I can't? 
where did that word come from? The moment we learned that we, I, I can't, but babies never knew that. We got up and learned to walk. We fell over, but we didn't say, oh, well, I'm never walking again. No, we got up and we kept trying and we kept, we kept going for it. We didn't know the word I can't. It's not until someone else came up and told you that and allowed that idea to go into your subconscious mind. So it literally is a choice. Um, it's what you say, it's your opinion that matters. That's, the one, that's what I wanna leave you with today, is what you think. And you can write, you can d design how you wanna feel. It's that, uh, as adults, we've lost that feeling of connection, that playfulness of what is it that we want and lights us up. And that's why when I was talking about when you write your desires down, don't just write it as uh, I, I would, you know, yes, I would love a house. I would love this income. I would love, okay, so let's say income. I, I, I would love to be earning, I don't know, half a million a year. Um, write that down if that's what you want. But what is the reason behind that number? What is it going to give you? What is the What is the joy in having that number? Because it may be like 250. Not that I want to make the numbers smaller, but you've got to put meaning behind these, your desires. And that's when you change things from wishful thinking to actually, no, I, I, I desire this. I want, I want to have this. It would give me so much joy. Um, so I'm just digressing a little bit. So that's why I say desire more than goal, because I feel more pulled to it. Um, rather than trying to achieve, achieve, I must achieve this. Um, I'm gonna give you a different example about self-image, okay? How about being a morning person or not a morning person, right? Um, I was not a morning person before. I was actually given a rag doll that says, I'm allergic to mornings. So um, I went to sleep with it, I woke up, it was given to me by someone I loved. It was an affirmation <laughs> that got embedded and encoded into me, but I love the doll, it was cute. Um, so I was ended up being programmed not being a morning person and boy, it was hard to <laughs> break that one. Um, but, you know, who's to say that you are a morning person or not a morning person, right? When did that happen? When did that happen? What happened to us to make us go one way or another? Um, so anyway, I just wanted to sh throw, throw that one in there. Um, and then I'm just trying to, sorry, I lost my place because I'm just trying to get a few points in. Yeah, I think ultimately, you know, you, you've got to ask yourself this, these questions, right? Do you believe you are worthy of success? Your conscious mind will probably say yes. What is, what's the quiet thought saying, hmm? Who are you kidding? Who do you think you are? Right, we, we, we're gonna call out this, the, this resistance. Um, do you feel like you are worthy enough to ask this amount of money from your clients? Or do you believe you're mediocre? Because if you think you're mediocre, life will hand you mediocre results. Um, why is it that we do a test? And if we fail that test, and this is the same as judgment from other people, um, we, we judge ourselves by something external to us. We judge ourselves by that mark. And all that failure is, is an indication of where your mind was at on that particular day. It's nothing to do with our potential, yet we rely on our degrees and A-levels and GCSEs to, to say, this is, this is how good I am or not. And I wanna bring us back to the perfection from the day that we were born and in the early years when we really thought we were invincible. Has everything resonated so far with everyone? Is it making sense? Okay, cool. Um, so I wanna give you something cause I know we're running out of time. Um, how do we change the rhetoric or the dialogue that's going inside? 
How do we upgrade our self image? And, you, and again, you only need to adjust it when you have a desire to go for. So, so, so for example, um, what, what's, the, what's the goal we wanna go for? I mean, say, say if, it's a, if it's a promotion or, or a top, top, top role that you wanna go for. Um, why don't you have it now? Is it because you've only just thought about doing that? Do you think you need more experience before you apply for it? Um, what, is, what is it that you want? Why is it that you want this role? Okay, so you, you create the, the desire. I want this role because it's gonna give me more income, because allegedly it's gonna give me for more free time with my family, because I would love that because it would show that I've progressed and I would be proud of myself. So we have this goal, but there is gonna be a gap right, between where you are and where you want to go. The gap is the self-image. It's the, it's the voices inside. So the first thing you've got to ask yourself is recognize what's your current setting. You have to be a master and witness your thoughts, become aware and journal. What do you say to yourself when you look in the mirror? Truth. What is your repetitive chatter? Does it turn on the moment you wake up in the morning does it start going then what plays around in your mind because when we start asking these questions and you actually really listen to what you are saying to yourself like oh I should have done it better oh um I expected more from myself oh I should have said that right we, we're kind of beating ourselves up sometimes um and I'm talking when I use these examples I'm talking about me <laughs> the former self I don't know if it's relatable um, but we want to ask these questions to get to the root, to identify what is, what is the limits? What are the limits that you're self-imposing on yourself that's on automatic? Because this is what's driving the vehicle here. So that's the first thing, get aware. Okay, you're going to call it out. Um, the second thing you do is you've got to create the goal image or the desire image. So if your desire is to go for this particular role in this company, um, what do you have to do to achieve this role? Who do you need to be? What, who do you, who, what, what's the identity you need to create? Is it more confidence? Is it a certain level of discipline? Um, is it, I don't know. Um, I'm just thinking like, sorry, just reading a message there. Um, who do you need to be to achieve that role? And there'll be a list of things of who you need to be that you are not quite feeling it right at this, at this level here. And you need to integrate that. So you start writing that out and you start visualizing it. Okay, so you're looking for traits like I am disciplined, I am confident, um, I am determined, um, I am decisive. And so you create these I am statements and there's so much power in affirmation because everything is energy and our thoughts are energy and therefore the words we speak is energy and they all have a positive or negative vibration or frequency to it. So we want to empower ourselves. And the more that we repeat these affirmations over and over and again, we want to overwrite and drown out all the resistance that's there. So that's the second thing. So first thing, awareness of what you're saying. Second thing is look at where you want to go to and just identify who's the person I need to be because it's about being. And then the third thing is you have to act as if. So you've written out all these things then you have to make an irrevocable decision that this is the person I'm becoming or being right now. So if I want to have six pack abs and be super healthy, wh where am I now? And where do I want to go to six pack abs? Therefore I have to look at what I'm eating. I have to be consistent. I'm disciplined. Um, I'm ordered. I've got all my food and training plans sorted out. Um, and I just keep showing up like an athlete. So 
you don't decide tomorrow I'll be that because you'll have those moments where you waver and go I'd love to have that cake um, but once you make the decision it's a commitment it's a declaration but you only stick to it when the desire is 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 enough it's it's like a burning desire and you connect with it why do I want to have those six-pack abs why do I want that job role why do I want that income You've got to be that person because that's the only way that you're going to bridge that gap. And that's all about self-image. So that's how you create the self-image script. Number one, awareness of what you're saying. What are you limiting yourself to? Call it out. Dig it out. It's a weed. You need to pull it out. Two, the goal image, where you want to get to. Who do I have to be? Create the I am statements and then go out about your day and be that person. It's as simple as that. Um, when I went from school to university, because remember I said I was a shy child. Um, I, I was a shy child and I decided when I go to university, I won't have to, um, I want, people don't know me. I can create a new identity. I, I want to have friends. I want to, I want to be, um, I want to, I want to attract people to me and just create a different kind of setup because people in school were really clicky and I don't want that. And so I created this confident image. I didn't know I was doing that. I did this so many times in my life as a private investigator for Lucy Liu um, and Emma Peel to the confidence because I wasn't a confident person before. I was really shy. And so I decided I'm gonna to go to university and be confident. I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident. I went in, no one knew me. That was my persona, that was my identity. I made loads of friends. And it just kept going up from there. So it does work. But then the tools I have given, they are simple. They are really, really simple. They have to be, otherwise you're not gonna do them. So that is pretty much what I'm sharing. I really loaded this session. <laughs> Susan, thank you. Thank you so much.